Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Real Heroes Show. You got Corey and Nick with you here, as always. And in this video, we're going to be reviewing, with lots of spoilers, episode 14 of Star Wars The Bad Batch, which was entitled War Mantle. Nick, it's Friday. We made it. Another week is in the books. How are you feeling? We did. Uh, I am glad it's Friday. I can't wait till the weekend. Yeah. And... Uh... <laughs> Good some good good stuff coming out this weekend. Uh, yeah, the Green Knight. Green Knight is coming out in theaters yeah. this weekend. Only in theaters. No, only no in theaters. There. Yeah, um, Jungle Cruise on Disney yeah, Plus Premier Cruise. Access, which uh, the reviews are pretty decent for it. So I think I'll I'll check it out. Um, yeah, um, wasn't I, sold on it entirely, but good reviews are are pushing me towards checking it out so that and i saw like a little tidbit of i think the rock posted on his instagram was the first like five minutes or something like that or part oh, okay of cool the movie and i it uh it, it looks kind of interesting i'm like you know i can't really expect a bunch out of it but it might be right. one of those i don't know humorously feel good i've heard it's kind of pirates of the caribbean like yes which yeah it as long as it's like the first one, it. that's great. I'm I'm sold. I'll watch it. It, so. it definitely has that feel to it. So yep, yeah. cool man. So uh, are, are you going to the theater for for the Green Knight? You're gonna check it out. I'm waiting to see what uh, what uh, seats look like later tonight. Uh, I'm okay. debating with a friend, uh, possibly like a 10 p.m. showing, just to go to like as empty of a theater as possible. Exactly. Wait yeah. wait till people don't leave, don't want to go out that late, or you know if they want to go elsewhere by all means True. You know, more seating and room for us that way we can um just chill maybe in the very back you know and then isn't it sad that this is the the place that we're at yeah you know plus oh, i don't i don't like sitting close anymore because of my neck i guess it's just yeah no sitting too close to screen is terrible i i did that one time i think i was in like high school and it was before reserved seating was a thing and it was like the second or third time that I saw the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man. It was like oh, 2002 yeah. or something. And I was in like the very front row and I was just staring up the entire time. And staring. I, I, my neck was sore for like two days straight after it. And I was, I was like, nope, I'll never do that again. Even if I buy a ticket and that's the only option, I'll just like happily do and right. and go see it a different way. So, right. uh, so let's talk about Star Wars because that's Star what this video Wars. is about. So, uh, last week's episode uh, kind of sucked, and this week's episode was kind of great. And I'm it really was. happy that um, now that we are in the final stretch, it seems like things are refocusing. It looks like there is a, a clear end game as to to where this is going. Um, so let's just dive right into it. Uh, I have notes because when I like something, I take notes. So notes. Uh, first thing, uh, the episode title is War Mantle, which refers to Project War Mantle. Uh, this was referenced in Rogue One. Uh, yeah. When Jin and Cassian are pulling the little slides out in the, uh, the tower on Scarif. Uh, it is one of the things that's mentioned. It is an Imperial project um, to transition from clone troopers to conscripted soldiers yeah. um they reference in this episode the move from having cc numbers to tk numbers which is uh fun and you hear that in mando season two uh in the bill burr episode that you, you, we've covered you, on the channel you um, technically hear that before then yeah i guess you do a but new hope it, it's it's in my brain uh that scene where the guy's like what's your tk number son and, and oh yeah Pedro pascal's like oh i don't know what to this is the first time my face has been viewed by another <laughs> human in like 13 years. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, there's a lot of New Hope stuff in this episode. Yes, which there I, is. Which I thought was great. But um, the clones are getting uh, or giving training to the new recruits. Um, so yeah. we got some some clone commando stuff uh, from Delta Squadron, which didn't think that was going to happen. That was pretty cool because the Bad Batch kind of like seemingly replace them in canon but right. um, they're here on this planet which was called Daro um, training up these guys and uh, Gregor from Rebels who was yep. one of uh, Rex's buddies is yep. one of those clones that's doing the training Yeah, he sends a distress signal to Rex Rex can't help at the moment so he calls out to the Bad Batch to do a rescue operation and that's where this whole thing comes from uh, the new soldiers are terrible they can't shoot for <laughs> shit <laughs> so Project War Mantle <laughs> Uh, not off to a good start. There was one spot where they even killed one of their own guys, and yep. he flew off the platform, which was which was great. So, great. Uh, what are what are your thoughts on Project War Mantle and the way that they're kind of leading this into where Star Wars inevitably goes from here? Yeah, this is uh, the beginning of of what we 
have grown to know and right um you know i when i when i first heard him say like tk i was like like it's the first thing that popped in my house tk421 do you 421, copy do you copy yeah. you know and i kept playing that mo- moment in my head and obviously like you said there are a lot of, lot of things that uh, tied into like a new hope but um you know seeing how the war mental reference comes in uh you know they're not using clones anymore they're being trained by clones but um uh clones had better uh accuracy than uh the tk units these all recruits that are coming from everywhere um you know yeah one of the things that gregor said he called them uh plebs or yeah yeah plebs (laughs) like we've been saying that for years it's like very like big like internet term um so i the fact that 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 was included i I was laughing like did he just say plebe like (laughs) or pleb however you want to call but the same thing i was like wow um you know in a a much much better uh turnaround episode from from last week you know we we see the hunt take place like we get another cameo from rex a new one from gregor um you know the tension is high um you know man crosshair is just becoming more and more ruthless and uh you know he's a real um he's a real jerk really is you know and uh but it's great because it's great for the story and and uh the action and tension that we we've seen so far and is i think these these next next two episodes are going to be pretty pretty dicey i think they're gonna be pretty intense and hopefully heartbreaking (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's that's what i'm hoping for star wars tear my heart out and step on it because i want emotion I'm, i'm reading the the high republic books and i'm like 85% 85% through the the new one that just came out the rising storm and it's it, it almost reminds me of like early game of thrones where it's like they pulverize you by hurting everyone you care about and then when you think it's over they just keep doing it and mm. <laughs> making things worse uh i kind of want that from from the bad batch to a degree i want to see some stakes i want to see some emotion uh if somebody has to die for that to be a a thing then so be it you know we don't see any of these characters post original trilogy so they gotta go they gotta go and and i'm fine with that um which we'll get into some of that in in a little bit but uh you mentioned crosshair obviously hunter at the end of the episode he gets captured uh crosshair kind of mirrors the line from darth maul at the end of clone wars where he's like i was hoping for kenobi right why, why are you here he's like right i was hoping for the whole, the whole squad. squad i was like okay yeah, yeah but you'll do greedy yeah. greedy little crosshair but um i'm curious do you think because hunter's obviously the leader of the batch right. crosshair was once a part of the batch right now that they're together in a prison cell is there any chance that hunter could talk crosshair back to the good side or do you think this turns into something where like crosshair takes hunter back to camino and they re-implant a chip in his head and have him work for the empire man um it's very possible i i i think the the way this could go in in either direction whether um whether he dies uh, uh after being like re-implemented um or you know, maybe I'd say if there's gonna be a season two, or I, that's gonna be the big like, the, like that's true deciding yeah. factor, right? If there's a season two, um, which we don't know yet, I, I, I do like the fact that we don't know because it, it makes it, these last three episodes um, feel uh, mysterious as yep. far as the story goes and the character development. Right. Um, you know, I what do what I want to see? Um, I I would like I'd want to see crosshair come back but uh, I, I i think i think he's going to die you think crosshair is uh, going to die yeah okay but i think hunter might might die as well huh. and okay because because it's like gregor doesn't he doesn't die right so um we know rex doesn't die yeah we don't, we don't know about the actual bad batch themselves because yep. you know their story is being written uh i i I don't know, man. Like it's it's a tough it's a tough way to see what what Filoni is gonna do with again like pulling on our heartstrings here. You yeah. know, is he gonna you know bring 
uh, Crosshair back into the loop? Is Hunter gonna get brainwashed and and because I feel like if Hunter gets brainwashed, like that's it. The rest the the rest of the Bad Batch, uh, Omega, like they're done. <laughs> they're they're done. And like, the the emotional punch that that would have to Omega. Oh, uh, Omega, yeah. If she... she sees that Hunter is now working for the Empire, and like if he tries to kill her and she has to run away, like he's the closest thing she's got to a father, right? Yeah. yeah. Star Wars is all about the, the family and family the, dynamic yeah like that yeah. that could that could crush Kids, her character yeah uh which time, as much as i time. love omega i would love to see something like that happen because it would really raise the the emotional stakes but um talking about the a new hope aesthetic we kind of touched on that a little bit with the the tk numbers uh that one room they're in with the control panels looked like it was yeah. straight out of the room that they hide in on the death star with like yes. the red and everything the i thought that was pretty cool and- uh, yep r2 and uh, like, oh, i want to put oh, these on you the hallways very yes, the hallways uh that transition and, yeah slow i could to- i could totally i could totally i totally saw chewy and, and han right running yeah. ah. um some of the musical cues in those yeah. hallways were pretty yes. much ripped right from the new hope soundtrack and just kind of yes kinderized to to fit in the animated stuff which is pretty yep. cool I um, sense a john williams uh take yeah. on this right now <laughs> yeah that very airy flute heavy type stuff that gives like that that space vibe um it was kind of funny the way that uh, gregor was laying on the the prison bed kind of mirrored the way that leo was laying on it in a new hope like just <laughs> like a little i don't know if you saw that but it was oh, kind of yeah it's just kind of it... like well what else are prisoners gonna do they're just gonna lay there it's kind of leaning <laughs> yeah. back like um which is pretty cool and then the last thing uh the stormtrooper designs they weren't quite stormtrooper yet right but uh i looked online after watching the episode and before recording this uh those are pulled like almost directly from a ralph mcquarrie concept art for a new hope interesting okay um, which is which is pretty cool and it's a, it's yeah, a pretty yeah. neat little homage they've done that a lot they did that with the spider creatures in mando 2 uh, last mando, year yeah yeah um, so just really neat stuff and like we're getting closer to a new hope so i think it's really cool that that kind of stuff is starting to to bleed in and, and the difference between what the bad batch looks like and what the regular troopers look like is becoming more and more significant as the show goes on so yeah pretty pretty cool stuff yeah, I, I think uh, again, like the, the music in this episode was was great. Excellent. You know, the, the, yeah. the, like just from the the orchestral type um, sounds to this like the like especially at the end where Crosshair is like talking to uh, Hunter, and you have like this like like weird like electronic sort of mm-hmm. like these sounds like this uh, like like ethereal type like like noises um i i i dug it a lot like yeah. again music can I, make make it that makes star wars what it is i think that's something that uh we can thank ludwig Gorenson for because yes. his score for the mandalorian is so different yeah than the john williams stuff from the movies that yeah it kind of broke new ground and made it so that way like some more weird stuff could be part of the uh, the orchestral scores for these shows yeah, like the digital stuff yeah, because like if you listen to Rogue One or Solo, uh, both great scores, uh, John Powell and Michael Giacchino did a great job, both of them. Yeah. Um, but they they follow the Star Wars mold. They're very orchestral. They're very right. traditional in their scoring and everything. Um, the Mando music is completely totally off the rails compared to that. Yeah. Uh, in a good yeah. way. I love the Mando score. So. Oh, same. Um, same. It's, it's really good stuff there. Uh, the next thing I have on my notes, <laughs> uh, Camino is fucked is what i actually wrote down <laughs> pretty much <laughs> um they're they're so screwed uh the yeah. prime minister they didn't show it but probably did right yeah um you know they even said uh, i think earlier on in the episode like you know they enabled the empire themselves and it's kind of like they dug their own grave by getting in bed with them yeah uh you know which we kind of felt earlier on like why is Camino helping the Empire? Like, it's probably not going to be good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this this episode was further proof of it. You know, like, the, there's, uh, it, yeah, the Prime Minister's probably dead. So at yeah. this point, like, what's left, you know? And even if they found um, uh, Omega, like, she would probably get offed as well. Um, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, if, if, you know, again, that would be pretty dark, but uh, yeah. I, I doubt, I kind of doubt we'll see that. 
Um, did, did you find it interesting that they didn't kill Malise because they said that scientists are valuable, but politicians are not? Yeah. Um, so which... what's, what's their end game there? Well, I mean, I think it's, it'd be interesting if they if they talk about, um, you know, Nala say being the scientist that she is and being more valuable than a politician, um, you know, you know, Star Wars has always had a lot about cloning, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, you know, whether you talk about the the extended universe from the books right. or what we've uh, recently seen in Mandalorian season two. Um, uh, I forget what episode number it was. I like, think it was the fourth episode. Fourth, yeah. Um, you know, when they're on, uh, the, uh, they find the base and they see these back to looking tanks in there and it's like, well, <laughs> there's definitely a, some sort of uh, replicated yep. peep, uh, person in there, uh, right. some kind, creature, whatever. And humanoid. the person behind that has a Camino patch on his arm. So even if Camino gets blown to hell by the end of this, there's still some remnant of remnant, Camino right, that's, right. that's doing this cloning stuff, which is... So maybe Nala say creates her own scientific division, you know, and then people yeah. are just kind of brought on board with that, and they that's the patch that they wear to represent what they're kind of doing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm that is one of my, my curi- curiosities about by the end of the season. Is Camino just going to get completely destroyed? Like... I think so. <laughs> I, like, I think hopefully the final battle of this show will take place on Camino because it ends where it started. It's like poetry and right. rhymes. It's a George right. Lucasy thing to do. Right. Um, and then it could result in that base just completely getting obliterated because they're getting they're leaving the anyways. Water. You know they have a yeah. you know a batch of little Django's that they were packing up and sending out of there and god knows where they're going <laughs> you know yeah, that's that's an much. interesting thing so um i also thought that that one shot of the star destroyers over camino was dope yeah, as hell. i thought that was, that was really so cool. cool looking really, really um, cool uh, the imagery of camino even going right back like all the way to episode two uh is is awesome it's just a really cool looking environment Great. for star wars so uh, love seeing more of that hopefully we'll see more of it uh as the the season comes to a close um which last point of this episode where where do we think it's going like where do, where do we think these final two episodes take us uh do we cliffhanger do we tie a bow on it what, what are your thoughts uh you know definitely a clip if, if we see a cliffhanger then we're getting a season two i i, I think it's safe to to say that um okay. that would be my proposal um but if depending on what happens next week and then we go damn there's only one more episode um and who knows if that last episode would be extended or not um you know if it's if it's like the normal length then i i again i would maybe say they'll probably leave it on a cliffhanger um but if it's a bit longer um kind of how they did with the first episode then i would expect more to happen and at that point maybe there's not a season two and then all goes to hell um, with the Bad Batch, and again, um, the, the the fate and future of Rex and Gregor uh, proceed because of, of Rebels. Sure. But yeah, we I know they don't die. So. Right, but the bigger thing is Bad Batch and, and Omega. Um, you know, if the Bad Batch gets, you know, offed, does Omega, does she make it somewhere? Does does she show up somewhere else? Is that, and then ha- is her own story to, to be, you know, written and decided later on as she grows up is she just chilling somewhere you know during the, the events of uh the original trilogy just on a beach with like yeah. a tiki drink like yeah fuck that i'm not getting involved in that shit again <laughs> yeah exactly like changed my name i'm not a clone like cause she just looked like one so she could yeah, create true. like a whole separate identity right and yep. um or does she kind of go into the old spy world and like the kind of you know like rebellion i, I mean Possible. yeah there's a lot there's a lot that could really we have a show uh, that follows Cassian Andor through his beginnings. Yeah, it lines up time wise. It, it, I wouldn't have it out of the realm of possibility to see a live version of that right. character if she survives right. through this this first season. So, yeah. any, anything's possible. Uh, I'm just hopeful for uh, some continued action 
that was like this episode because the action yes. was terrific yeah um the animation was flawless there were some shots in this one that they looked like real life like it did scary yeah. like Proceeds they, to... they look better than the prequels <laughs> like it's absurd <laughs> how, how good the show looks innovation yeah um and I hope that there's some some high drama with some stuff that that surprises us and, and kind of makes us gasp along the way. So, yeah. um, out of ten, we're we're on we're on the home stretch now. So you got this one next week and the week after, and then we're done. Uh, where are you scoring this one? Um, so I watched it twice, right? Yeah. Um, I, just to be certain and to go back on a couple of things I know I missed. Um, so I'm gonna give it a solid eight point five. Okay, eight point five. I was I was gonna be right in that same realm yeah uh, i thought it was so much better than last week that i was tempted to like give it a nine out of the gate but um <laughs> I, i've i've tampered that i'm gonna give it an 8.5 just to give room for next week and the week after to hopefully just ratchet up a couple yes. notches each, right. each week and then close this one out on a extremely high note star wars animation and live action for that matter <laughs> They've done a really good job with like big surprise moments as they've they closed out seasons. Have. You know, whether it's, you know, the Ahsoka Clone leaving Wars. the Jedi Order yeah. or the Twilight of the Apprentice episode in Rebels or, you know, the Darksaber at the end of Mando 1, Luke Skywalker at the end of Mando 2. Yep. They have a tendency to go all out for their their final couple episodes. So I'm really yep. excited to, to see what happens. But uh, I think that's enough from me and you We'd love <laughs> to hear what the audience thinks so guys uh, if you're if you're following along with us if you're watching the bad batch we'd love to hear what you thought about this week's episode uh did you like it did you think it was better than last week um what are you predicting and hoping for uh for the penultimate episode next week and then the finale the week after that drop us a line and let us know below as always you can support us for free all you have to do is subscribe to the channel if you haven't already like this video share with your friends if you think we're idiots Tell us we're idiots, boost that algorithm, make us feel good about ourselves by <laughs> doing whatever you can to get more people in front of these videos. Um, we'll be back next week. Um, we will have a Ted Lasso review on Monday. Uh, hopefully we'll have a Green Knight review. James Gunn's Suicide Squad comes out next week with the penultimate episode of The Bad Batch. There is a lot for us to cover. We're very yes. much looking forward to doing it. So make sure mm -hmm. to stay tuned for all those things. Until next time, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.